you can end up wherever you want, right. but when you're doing it, put the purpose and passion and look for the profitability. One of the things that you uh, were talking about was how you first started out like, I guess you wanted to be like a football player, then yeah. you went to talk to your brother, going to med school, and then you became a lawyer. So like there are all these different pivots, and I'm kind of feeling the same way now where like, oh, I want to do investment banking because that's where all the money is. Oh, actually, don't fit the culture. Let me do wealth management. So all these different pivots. So like, yeah. what lesson did you learn and how did you like The go? best lesson we were talking earlier is, you know, you have these stages, right? You're raising your awareness. You're developing your skills, knowledge. We were talking about this fashion show. Is this a good place to film a new TV show that Aaron and I want to do? Well, it's not fashion anymore. Right, fashion is the topic. It's not really in the industry. Because yeah. every single thing involves sports or fashion or food or art. Right. right. He's a CRM guy. That's what he really does. That's a skill and a knowledge. That CRM is specific to what he loves, art or not loves. You can make money from it. Anyway. <laughs> um, but he, here's the best example. I wanted to be a sports agent. I right. go to law school, end up selling legal research online. Right. I end up then raising money in the Silicon Valley uh, for a wireless proxy server company and become a director of that, right? Then I end up being a CEO of a handheld for Samsung's first smartphone. Right. Then I retire and invest money. I become a real estate developer, construction, I had interior construction. I was a VC in, in respect, I owned a lot of stock. I did, you know, a lot of things I shouldn't do. Right. And somehow, I meet Lee Steinberg helping a friend. Right, who has a TV show that he wanted me to, I'm like, you know, my idiot friends, I'm probably the best lawyer they know and I never practice law. I even told my friend that, dude, if I'm the best lawyer you know, you're in trouble, but I want to meet Lee Steinberg. In 48 hours I was hired, right, as the COO of the most notable sports agency in the world and in six months I was CEO. If you came to me today and said, Dave, how can I be a sports agent or run the most notable sports agency in the world? How do I do it? And I said, well, go to law school and get a job in technology. Yeah. Right? And I tell you what I did, you would leave going, that guy's insane right. and not it's take my not advice. Like a linear. So the thing that I learned was there is supernatural path for you. Right. Your job is the law of Goya and the law of attraction or the law, universal laws. Law of attraction is, right, that if I put it out there, and I focus in on it every day, right. it's gonna happen for me in the right way at the perfect time. The law of Goya, John Asaroff, I always give him credit because he taught me this, get off your ass, yeah. right? I beat you with time, <laughs> I beat you with math. The law of Goya, those people that know both laws and can combine them, you're gonna get to where you want. I don't know how you're gonna get there, right. what all these little pivots you're gonna do, you're gonna do them. Right. Right, you, you, I know chefs that end up starting pickup sticks, right, came over from China, not a lick of English, right. dishwasher at a Chinese restaurant and ends up being a billionaire owning pickup sticks. I couldn't tell you how, what path right. that was, but I'll tell you two things he believes in, laws of the universe and law of Goya. Nobody, he beat them with math. He was a dishwasher, but he, he was like the CEO when he was a dishwasher. He put his passion, his purpose, and looked for profitability while he's washing dishes. He was learning, he was learning English. He was, that's all you gotta do, right. but keep it moving. There, there's a million different ways. I'll, I'll take the whole firm at David Dunn's firm, Athletes First, Rep One, you wanna be a sports agent, CAA, IMG. Take the top executives, look down their paths. N none of them are the same. But all, I'll tell you what they all have in common. They believe somehow in, in the laws of the universe right. and they all believe in the law of Goya. They weren't high on their mom's couch thinking, I'm gonna go to law school, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know. Yeah, on this day I'm gonna quit yeah. my job and then do something else. Which makes it nice for you because you don't have to worry anymore. Right. Right, you, you just stay focused on doing it right. and enjoying every day, enjoying right. the pursuit of your potential. Your pursuit of the potential could be working here, it could be working for Aaron, for Paisley, and the art. you can end up wherever you want, right. but when you're doing it, put the purpose and passion and look for the profitability. It's not just, it's, it, people are like, I wanna do what I love. Then love what you do, moron. Right. Right. Like, I put passion, I, you heard my garbage example, you watch a lot of my videos, it's my garbage. favorite one. <laughs> I hate freaking garbage. And the reason I do six kids, for some reason, I have bad gar garbage karma. They always make me take it out. Four <laughs> brothers and a sister. Right. Then I get into fraternity, football fraternity, right. smallest guy. Guess who has to take the trash out of my fraternity? That's really yeah. sucky. Then I end up with a girlfriend, then a fiance, then a wife. Tiny girls, because I'm tiny. They're not taking the trash out. Then I end up with three daughters, right? right? Literally, spilling, kicking, hating the trash. 
I decided to put my thing to practice. I said, you know what? I'm gonna look at the tracks differently. So consider that being a job that you hate. Right. Because that's what it was for me, right. taking the trash out. I said, you know what? What if I, when I took out trash, I did something that I love, which was, I don't have time to think about what I want in my life to make me happy. Just a couple moments, every break, every time, plus I'm gonna do good deeds and I'm gonna make my trash good deeds. So if I see trash on the street, I'm gonna create a, a void for the universe to give back to me. And when I create a little void, picking up trash, throwing away, I'm gonna ask big to the universe what I want. I want $100 billion. I don't know how to get there yet, right. but I want it. So I started taking the trash out, thinking, and I took it out slower. I'd be at friend's house. I'm like, hey, can I take that out? Because I just wanted a break. Yeah. I wanted to think, and I made it purpose with passion to think about what's gonna make me happy. My energy changed about trash, stopped spilling it, no broken glass cutting me anymore, you know, didn't drip on, all the shit that happens yeah. when you take, yeah. when you hate it, right. right? Slamming it, it spill. I can't tell you how much time. Right. Now, here's the weirdest thing, and this is true, that my three daughters, now they're teenagers. Teenagers are the stupidest people on earth. <laughs> Sorry, if you are, I'll help you, but nothing I can do. I was one. All of a sudden, I went to go take the trash out, and my 16-year-old daughter, or now she's 17 at the time, the most difficult middle child of all of them, is like, oh, let me get that for you. I believe the reason is because my energy, right? She saw that all of a sudden, it's like someone eating cake and going, oh, mm, yeah. this is the best cake. You want to be like, hey, can I have that cake? Yeah. I think she felt my energy that there was something different, like, because I was always doing this and, and that's what you want to do. You're, you're never going to be happy if you think you're going to be happy when you get this job. Right. Make this job what you love to do. Challenge yourself. I tell people all the time, you're bored of your job, try to do it twice as fast and then use that extra time to do something that you love to do. Try to make twice as much money as fast as you can. Like, people don't take that. Brad and I have obsessive be behavior, and he's laughing at me, because I'm like, okay, I'm gonna see how many of these calls I can do. And I'll, I'll look up at him, I'm like, ooh, two minutes and 42 seconds. Like, that sounds stupid, but if you're taking 12 overview calls a day to help other people, to be of service, it can get mundane. Yeah. But I put purpose into it so that it keeps on being fun. I'm challenging, why do you think people play Fortnite? Because there's constantly this challenge, it's gamification, right. but it's more than gamification. I think it's purposefication.